I'm going to do this video a little bit in reverse. I've got the new 70 to 200, got confirmation that it's okay to take pictures with it and share them straight away. So let's go do that and then we'll go in and unbox it. I lost my GoPro mount, so gaffer tape will do. Okay, first shot with this lens. Do you mind me taking a photo? Uh -huh. Uh, I, this lens is brand new and I'm testing it for YouTube, so I didn't have time to get a model So I thought I'd see if I could find someone beautiful in the park <laughs> Where about you go? Originally Australia, you sound like a Kiwi, are you? No, Australia Oh, that's a terrible insult then, sorry <laughs> How, I'm right now Ah, uh, yeah, so that would be it How long have you been here? Uh, I'm just busy Okay, for how long? Well, that's my favorite. <laughs> no, I am a, I would do photography tours, so I, uh, next week I'm off to Mongolia oh, leading a God. tour. Oh, yeah, Hi. I'm used to this, I, obviously, I can see that. Natural. That's your blue steel, right? So I was mostly shooting with it without any teleconverter and I was really impressed with the focus speed. Of course, this isn't Safari or sports, but I've shot a lot of this stuff with all kinds of lenses and this is performing really well. I did shoot it with the 1.4 and two times teleconverter. It seemed to be fine, but I haven't done enough testing to really say how I feel it performs. Well, no problem picking out people like this. It's not much of a test for a lens like this. Or... Okay, folks, as we did this a little bit in reverse, now let's step into the studio and do the unboxing. I'll be putting more images, including some raw files, up at mattgranger.com forward slash Tamron 70 to 200. Hey folks, in today's video, I have something very special to unbox and show to you and have a little test out and play with. It's a new Tamron 70 to 200 VC generation two. Let's have a look. Okay, folks, before we open this new lens, please do jump on over to mattgranger.com. You can sign up to my mailing list there and keep up to date with all of the things that are going on. If you have any trouble signing up, just try it in a different browser. Some people have had an issue recently that we're working on. Now, in terms of this lens, I'm really excited to get this one. I used the original 70 to 200, 24 to 70, 15 to 30 extensively. The new range of SP lenses, I think are performing really well and they're at like literally half the price of the competing Nikon and Canon lenses and they're just getting better and better. In generation two, they started off with the 150 to 600, which is a great lens. I did a video on that recently, card above. And the refinement seems to be getting better, the VC is getting better and optics are getting better. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be the same on this one. But I have to say from the outset, this video is not a review. This lens just arrived to me. It's an unboxing and I'll take a couple of sample images for you and give you my feeling on the hand holding. But I'm going to be taking this one with me to Mongolia next week and putting it through its paces. Um, and I'll be sharing with you content from that trip. So let's unbox it and as I do that, we'll get some little close-ups and I'll tell you about the specs. So 70 to 200, we know that much. It is f2.8 through to f22 throughout the entire range. Nothing else important in there, I don't think. Maximum reproduction ratio on this one is one to 6.1 and minimum focusing distance 95 centimeters. Based on those figures, it's not going to be a true 200 mil at closest focus. So if that uh, issue of focus breathing is something for you, then you know I'll certainly take a look at that. Okay, so here we go. I feel like it's smaller than the other 70 to 200s. It's, um, let's take a look at the actual dimensions. Huh. 
Well, I just pulled up some specs on this to compare it. Best Buy is still selling the Generation 1 for 1500, where Adorama is selling the Generation 2 for 1300. And the Best Buy website doesn't have any specs. Okay, no, it seems on terms of specs that it's actually about the same length, maybe even slightly longer than the previous one, but the finishing is certainly next level. It feels like the whole outside body is uh, metal. To be honest, it never, well, it depends on the plastic. Some lenses feel fine being a little bit plasticky, others don't. If you've ever cracked open a lens and seen the metal that's on a full metal lens, like my 24 to 70 Nikkor, um, it's that crappy composite metal anyway. It's not like you're getting a sheet of steel or something. Um, but this certainly feels nice. And in terms of balance, if anything, maybe slightly back heavy, but the position of the foot means that, yeah, it, it balances out really nicely. It's hard to tell you too much about it, you know, just like this, we really need to put it on a camera, but it's got the three modes of VC now. So you've got the normal mode, the panning mode, where it will lock, stabilize in one angle whilst allowing you to move in the other and version 3 which they introduced on the 150 to 600 which gives you even more stabilization but it doesn't show it in the viewfinder meaning when you press the shutter button halfway and focus normally with the vc lenses they kind of freeze the image straight away this one it'll keep moving according to your hand wobble and it just applies the stabilization when you hit the trigger in you know the tests I did with the last lens, it performed really, really well. So hopefully it does here too. Then this has VC on and off, AF on and off, and the of course it's got full time um, override, and that's a much nicer resistance on the focus on this one. Not a big uh, throw on the zoom, which for fast adjustments would be great. If you want really fine adjustments, then that could be an issue. The focus is actually reasonably long and a really nice resistance to it. That's gonna be good. Uh, and then I think I mentioned this full or three meters to infinity focus. Uh, the collar, which I'm sure you can actually take off if you wanted to. Now, another thing that this one shares with the 150 to 600 G2 is compatibility with their new teleconverters. They've got 1.4 and two times teleconverters now, which also work with this. So adding this on, a two times teleconverter gives you double the reach, but it also takes two stops of light. So that takes this from being a 70 to 200 f2.8 maximum aperture to being a 140 to 400 f5.6 maximum aperture. So you do have a trade-off there for sure, but the extra reach that that gives you by just keeping this little guy in your pocket makes it versatile. So I'm actually planning to take this combo rather than any other longer lenses to be able to get closer up shots to the hunting eagle festival whilst we're in mongolia there's not much more to do right there's that then what have we got in the, the box we've got the hood then it comes with a small bag soft pouch and allen key and a couple of screws which would be for uh, the foot here and you'll note the foot on this one like the recent one as well as being uh, You know having the screw to put a tripod plate on it It is itself an Arca Swiss plate which is fantastic because all of my Gitzo tripods and monopods use Arca Swiss So then I don't need an extra plate on this one I can just throw it straight on that said when I'm using a strap I use black rapid straps so for that, I'll still need to put my plate on it anyway. But if you're not, and you're going to be using tripod, that's quite a handy, and you know, it doesn't cost them anything to add that on, so quite a handy feature, I think, to have. So might as well throw it on a body and go take a couple of sample shots to share with you. Hopefully this is a final version that I'm actually allowed to share the shots with. I'll confirm that before doing so. And otherwise, jump on over to macranger.com. You can see all of my upcoming trips over at the workshops page. I'm heading off to Mongolia now, next Bhutan, then Iceland, Namibia. We've still got some spots available for Namibia, and we've got some upcoming tours coming as well that will be announced at the workshops page. So let's head out. Okay, folks, as we covered this at the beginning, I'll just show you a few more images here and then a little bit of my conversation with the young lady I met at the park. And stay tuned, there'll be more coming with this from Mongolia. So, oh, this guy's not messing around. 
I'm sorry, I thought I'd found my model in you, but this guy... You're very intense. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, puppies. That's got to be the best thing about New York. Everyone's got dogs, I know, I know. and they're always out. I was saying that. Just okay. But the, and then they have walkers who take them out because they're too busy working. That's why I only have a cat. He just sleeps on the bed and he's quite happy.